Hello, everybody. Um, it's edition 193 of the Frank and Stan chat. And it's quite a momentous morning um, because Stan and I were thinking about how many changes of government have we had since we, well, certainly since I started teaching in 1979. Did you start in the same year, Stan, or a year 77, later? 77. I started. So you might have it the same as me. So yeah. in effect, we've worked out that this morning, as Labour have won a landslide with what is going to be about 34%, 35% of the vote. We've yeah. talked about that in a little while. But um, uh, this is only the third time since I qualified as a teacher that there is a change of government. So the first being for me, the, the uh, I joined in 1979. So that was the Thatcher was in. Um, and then uh, in 1997, we had the Blair government. And then in 2010, we had the Cameron government, which morphed into various other things, but in effect is still the old government. So it's quite a momentous uh, day today. And that's why I feel a bit bleary eyed and Stan, Stan was up late. <laughs> later than me so uh anyway so yeah i mean we're going to keep it relatively short um but uh i think we just needed to recognize that it was uh it was yeah. a big event it was and it, and it was it's you know as all the commentators say it's a really peculiar event because none of the uh, well the predictions were remarkable the the um <clears throat> the exit poll as as got Labour's score almost dead on. Yes, yes. They in four ten and it's four eleven, I think. Something like that. So it just makes you want the strength of those is is quite incredible. Um but it it's more it feels more as though it's a protest yeah. uh, punishment beating for, for the Conservatives rather than um you know if you think back to ninety seven and the things will get better, a change, we're looking for hope, we're looking for things to different. That doesn't appear to be the, the feel. No, no. I um, think I think there's a number of of issues that will come out as we as we progress through this uh, next five years. One of which is the uh, independent vote. So the independent candidates are uh, on a, a an international usually gaza issue yeah uh, yeah and i'm i'm a little bit concerned about where that where that goes almost as a block right uh, a block vote yeah it's interesting when you look at the share of the vote um reform and the conservative party you know they're close on 50 percent if you throw it all together yeah. you know so um, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, Labour have been clear that they're not going to consider uh, proportional representation, but the clamour for that is going to get greater and greater. You know, I think, yeah. uh, it, and certainly when they come the up... The Lib Dems would have done worse. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> the, one, uh, the one group that have been campaigning for it forever <laughs> would, would not have done as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was quite difficult. I was talking to Eleanor, our... Uh, uh, eldest granddaughter as I drove her to secondary school this, this morning, you know, and I said to her, um, well, you know, what happened last night? She knew there was a, an election going on, but she didn't know who the new prime minister was. She didn't know what they stood for, didn't even know the party they belonged to, you know. So in a way, there, you know, I think we are captured within all of this, you know, um, but the vast majority of people, you know, particularly young people, you know, I'm, I'm, I, we need to do more, don't we, to, you know, make them aware of the political sort of structures and and deficiencies, as well as the opportunities that our, our democracy provides, you know, compared to others. It's quite shocking that she's had so much education, high, allegedly high quality, but these big gaps. And I suppose the thing is, is that as parents, not all parents are in a good position to to, to teach all of this, you know, without it being slanted yeah. and swayed by their own political ideology you know yeah and i think uh th there's a lot to look at i, I was really interested about i passed three in the morning with i can't remember his name now the former conservative party chair who yeah. was saying um you know there's a, a, a risk or there's a, an expectation 
that, that the Conservative Party will move further right now to try and sweep up the reform votes, when in fact they've lost more seats to Lib Dem yeah. than they have to reform. And so he was saying, so maybe we need to look at just where we need to align ourselves and not just chase those those far right wing votes. Yeah. Instead, look look at what they would consider to be the the core, the central ground more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, and also one of the things that uh, it's a bit like if we were to do a Frankenstein chat for eighteen hours, yeah. <laughs> um, live. Um, I'm sure during that period of time, you know, some of the gaps, and, it, and particularly if we were being interviewed by others, some of the gaps in our thinking and uh, uh, our experience would start to reveal itself. But what I have found fascinating is seeing uh, the likes of Nadine Doris being absolutely hammered on yeah. television because she's on for such a long period of time, expected to make a comment on virtually everything. You know, the, 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 the gaps in her knowledge, the, the gaps in her perception of what life is like, you know, and the reasons why I think it's just, it's, 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 it's a gulf, you know, I mean, it's just got wider and wider and wider as the night's gone on. But she's typical of those people who, despite a lack of knowledge, decide that they're going to make some facts up. Yes, yes. You know, on on the off chance. I mean, I know she said that that Boris Johnson went to Eton on a scholarship, and everybody else. Rory looked... Stewart's going. No, he didn't. No, and, he didn't. And, she's, well, and, and he had a lot of hardship. And so Rory Stewart was saying, "Yeah, but all his all his brothers, you know, went to Eton <laughs> yeah. as well. You know, I mean, yeah. how's all that worked out? You know, I mean, it, it, yeah." Um, yeah, it's just, and it is it, it, in a way. I suppose we've just got to be hopeful, haven't we? We've got to have hope. Yeah, I, and I, 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 said, I was saying just before we we started recording, I was, I was heartened by one Penny Mordaunt speech uh, when she accepted defeat and said, you know, the one thing to look at this is how our democracy works, and it does work. Yes, and she was very gracious in defeat, and also Rishi Sunak in. One, he'd run Keir Starmer before the point of uh, of actually showing that, that they'd won, that Labour had won the election. Uh, but secondly, he talked about the transition of, of power being done sensibly, openly, um, smoothly, so that it's it's not, as we said, it's, we're not expecting something to happen tomorrow by yes. way of a revolution. No. And but I think there is there is a lot that... about British democracy. Yes, that yeah. we need to hold on to. Some of it showed itself though, didn't it? The Jess Phillips, speech, yeah. You know where, you know, completely unacceptable behaviour. You know this, you know, being gracious in in defeat, um, and having you know being part of the process. You accept that there are weaknesses and failings in every process, but you know when you when you join the the race. You have to accept all of those with it, and uh, you know, it's just it's just absolutely awful that those sorts of things happen. And also the thing of Steve Baker, who lost his seat. You know the um, uh, the former uh, government minister was it for Northern Ireland, um, but a big um, you know leave uh, you know, leader. Um, was saying that you know he, he doesn't regret losing you know in a way he, he can now move on with his life because he said my house will no longer be like a fortress you know and, and although some elements of my work as an mp are you know, really enjoyable and i enjoy giving back to the community some other bits have become intolerable but i have to say you know the in a way you you you, you reap what you sow yeah you know um i i you know, my, my ideal now would be a, a sort of a, an open hand to, to work, to recognise the issues that the country have got and say we, we actually want some cooperation between parties yeah. to fix the things that need fixing. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wonder if if all the parties will be up to, you know, we're not going to have a general election for a while. So no. in, a, in a sense, you can sit back and say, right, let's let's try and get things well, fixed. When you've only got a hundred and odd seats as a Conservative party, yeah. even if you throw reform into it, you know, they're not going to get any change unless they start to, you know, engage yeah. in a more open way, 
you know, with a, a more conciliatory approach, even if it's painful for them to do so, they're not going to make any progress, you know, no. so, um, and no one's going to be listening to them, you know, um, for another, I do think another needs, three years. It needs Labour to be humble in victory as well. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and to, to say, right, you know, it's roll our sleeves up now and all get on with, with shifting the things. Yeah. Need shifting. Really. It was in Bridget Phillipson's interview um, last night, you know, which it talks about um, being more open and supportive of the amazing staff that we have in our school, you know, appreciating all that they have been through and all that they're doing. You know, I think that 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 would be really helpful in just rebalancing the views that some parents have that schools are failing their children, you know, as mm -hmm. if to say it's a it's a that that education is a um, a delegated responsibility that I as a parent hand on to a school, you know, that it's not a, a collaborative venture anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where some of this begins yeah. and ends. And I think that's not saying, you know, there is complete underfunding of education as com particularly around special educational needs, you know, that we've been swamped with ideological approaches, you know, the 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 power of individual schools to do things, you know, has I think they've had seriously in this last since 2010 have had their wings clipped so many times that I think teachers are now wondering, you know, where am I going to bounce next, you know, so I think all of that, I think be really helpful to get to a position where there's a bit more respect and tolerance and appreciation for what goes on in our schools, which is what we see on a regular yeah. basis. Um, but if you've got and, and it was the reform part of this time. One of their policies was to uh, stop schools teaching children to hate Britain. Yeah. I mean, what, where uh, is that? Well, I, I have no idea where that's come yeah. from. And yet I can see people nodding at it and saying, yeah, yeah, we, must, yeah. we must stop that. Yeah. Stop yeah. them teaching about trans ideology, as they put it. Mm. You know, I, I did see a little sort of to and fro on Twitter where somebody said, somebody was saying that was absolutely right and we shouldn't have any of this. And somebody said, you're going to have to hope that your children don't end up as trans children. Yeah. <laughs> a completely different point of view. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, what gets to me is I, I go in schools, I don't see any of this, No. you know, ideology, ideological approaches on things that are sensitive. I, I just don't see it. The thing is, Stan, is that if, if, if this was going on regularly in schools, um, Ofsted inspectors, and I know we're highly critical of Ofsted, um, Ofsted inspectors would be reporting, or at least would be reporting that back. And that, and, and I, I'm not hearing that. You know, I, in a way, in the last well, three weeks, I think I've either been directly involved in or have been part of, you know, uh, a number of Ofsted inspections, I can tell you. This is far from the issues that yeah. they're dealing with. You know, what I mean, this is just off the scale in terms of ridiculousness in terms of what actually is happening in schools. Um, so, uh, but it's yeah. it's one of those things, Frank, that that's believable to a certain section of society, isn't it? That something must be going wrong. You know, yeah. you see yeah. one headline, and it's all schools. Yeah, and I, I think back to to head teachers who've made. Um, not necessarily brave decisions, but made decisions to to teach to the national curriculum, and had protests and and threats and yes, and that's got to that's got to be gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, that if it's a national curriculum, that's what it is. I, I do I do think there was a danger once we said um, that academies don't have to teach to the national curriculum, have sort of an awareness of it because that then opens the door to people protesting about what this particular school's doing and what mm. that school's doing. So I do think there needs to be a national framework around it. But we I, need to protect our teachers from that kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the, the, the Labour government have indicated, or their manifesto indicated, a review, you know, yeah. not a wholesale curriculum review. I don't think they're going down that road, but uh, a curriculum and assessment review. We, 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 I mean, I keep going back to... Um, if my brother was alive today, he was a, um, ever since he was at university, he was a paid up Labour member, you know, he would be rejoicing today, you know, particularly as somebody lived in Wales to see, in effect, 
all of the blue seats disappear and you know mm. the Labour actually doing reasonably well although with a, a drop in the share of the vote but you know he for me he would have uh, viewed all those changes that Labour are proposing about curriculum reform and about you know just have, have another look at the uh, assessment process that young people are experiencing you know he was clear wasn't he in yeah absolutely. in Pakistan chat you know about well what things would you change well I'd, I'd go back to um you know co very controversial but you know teachers really in a sense he was saying should be at the heart of the assessment process they're not it's the examination system yeah and we need to get I, i'm not i'm not one for giving up exams but i do think that we can't have a situation where students are studying uh, uh, at an A-level subject, 20% of their course is on a particular project, and that's not included as part of their final exam. Yeah. That is, the final mark, that is absolutely I, I think we've said before, it should, it should be a balance between uh, an examination and um, a professional judgment, yeah. albeit a moderated judgment. And if those two are significantly out, then my view is the moderate view of the teacher should take priority. Right. Yeah, see, others would say it should be the exam. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the exam only tests what you can reproduce. Yeah, I know, I know. 30 minutes or yeah. an hour or three hours. I think they were three hours when we did them. They were, they were. And I remember, um, and we're harping back, we were saying this was going to be a short one, but I can feel it's going to be a longer one. But I remember my history um, O level, um, I had something like about, 50 questions that I could choose from and I had to do I think it was three or five of those yeah, yeah it's usually you know, three. so in, in a, but so in a way you could you, you could just focus well as we did we just focused in on the curriculum yeah. was very wide the examination system obviously was very wide and in order to comp uh, uh, to uh, engage with that they had to have all these questions so you could just do three or four areas and do them really well and and, and pass your exam. Um, nowadays, uh, the criticism of history, particularly, is that it's very wide, and they and they assess everything, you know, within it. And and so, in a way, I think the curriculum review um, is necessary. Um, I, I would like to look at, at the baccalaureate again, and and to introduce some some art subjects in, yes, in yes. the baccalaureate, and then. It makes, for me, it makes a balanced curriculum um, a, a better overall view, a better mm -hmm. overall child development, if you like, yeah. than than just almost forcing people down a purely academic route. Uh, I mean, it, it, to me also, it's funny, I had a, a conversation with somebody from STEM Learning yesterday, and we were talking about the 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 weaknesses and failings of the computer science GCSE A-level course. And, um, you know, I, I speak to business leaders, um, not, I, I speak to, I'm very fortunate to be able to speak to some very senior business leaders, but also speak to some people running sort of three or four employees in a, in a city centre, you know, and, and they say, it, it's really shocking when you get young people in and, you know, they, they haven't been taught how to use, send an email, and they don't know how to use a spreadsheet. And of course, all of that um, used to be part of, uh, an IT qualification yeah. in order to boost it to sort of make it more challenging and, and and I think at the time people thought well you know we're going to have to include a lot more coding and stuff like that which is really important but they've sort of they've swung over to that element so that we end up with young people who have got sort of a creative slant uh, or just think I, I'm, I can't cope with the maths that you need to do for coding you know so I'm not going to study it and we, we, we need all of these people with those yeah. basic set of skills. We need the creative people into digital uh, industries and we need, you know, the technical people as well. It's a, it's a broad yeah. stretch that and yeah. we haven't got that at the moment. I was reading an article yesterday um, about uh, IT development and some the person writing the article was saying, the problem we've got now is the younger generation don't know how the systems work. Yes, that they actually don't don't know how they you know, and it's taking older, more experienced en engineers, engineers yeah, to be able to show how how the if you like, for a better phrase, how the program works, not how you can just 
fiddle it to yes. to make it a different yes. thing. Yes, yes. I suppose it's the same. You go back; it's the same argument about calculators and computers and everything, isn't it? That that if you can't add up in the first place, you know. my view was always if you can't add up, and many many hours have been put into trying to help you, then somehow it should be put I... into using a calculator. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, you you only have to put your phone to a problem. You know, you yeah. could put a very complicated algebraic uh, equation up and just put your phone to it, and it. it well, it, that's it, that's it what the article articles about because it was showing something Apple had just come up with, where you can write any formula, just just write it with an Apple Pen on the screen, and and it solves it. <laughs> I know, and you think, well, um, I'm not. I'm, I mean, having an understanding about how all of this works, I think, is really important. You know, but then, you, you know, I think that there are points where um, young people get to a certain time in their life where they just feel as though I've, I've lost it with this subject. I mean, I, I felt that, you know, I mean, I felt that about science, to be honest, when I was at school. I, just... I think you're right, Frank. And I, but I think the, the if you like the, the thinking, what's happening is that's really important. So everybody must do that. <laughs> yeah. Instead of saying, so we must ensure that a proportion of our graduates have done this. Yes. You know, we do that by controlling the places or controlling the, the, the what uh, universities offer or what colleges offer or what schools offer. You've got a way of controlling that. But to say, right, well, you know, maths is really important. Therefore, everybody has to do maths. And if you can't get maths, you can't have access to some of the well, arts. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And also, if you can't do maths, I mean, I have said before, uh, I mean, I didn't get my maths uh, O level. Um, and in a way that, that that wasn't I don't I think I was capable of getting it. I just our school didn't do it. You know what I mean? It, the kid who was doing maths O level went to the grammar school opposite. There was a decision made that we're all doing what was then CSE. And I, I, I got a grade two CSE math. Now, I'm not suggesting that you know, my low expectations or my low ability in mathematics, you know, um, is, is what everybody should endure. But I do feel as though we've got to a point here where the examination system creates a bottom third. It then asks that bottom third to go and resit subjects have already failed, some of which they probably can't be asked with anyway. And then we carry on. And, and actually, if you can't get it, then actually all of the other opportunities, uh, many of the other opportunities, regardless of what your talent is, are all closed off to you. You know, it, it, there's it's a mindset, isn't it, Frank? Because it you think about it, we're doing it with reception. You know, if you've not if you've not passed your um, what, what's the oh, words gone now? Phonics. Yeah. You, you need to read. You need to read. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Anybody who speaks to a year one teacher will tell you that that phonics assessment is not a good indicator of whether the child can read or not. Oh, no. Yeah, and, and there's, and in a way, people are starting to question, I think quite rightly, you know, why have we got ourselves into a position where we have been, uh, we've actually got approved two phonics schemes in the country, both of which are, they are making profit out of. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't know about you, Stan, but if we if we came up with a uh, um, let's say we came up with a, a fascinating program for uh, leadership development, you yeah. know, I tell you now, we wouldn't be out there saying, do you know what, we can make some money out of this. Uh -huh. I think I think our probably uh, our, our approach would be, let's put it out there. You know, yeah. if this sure works for you, you you use it, and and if it works, and if somebody wants to give you Stan, so Stan Johnston Johnson then you'd probably accept it. I think you probably would. But the thing is, is that that's the right way to do it. You know, but we've got yeah. a system at the moment where it's all about who's on the who's on the game. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I want to say something about something I saw in in Ofsted many years ago, where if you have to think about it, Frank, it's probably better not to I say I'm trying to where <laughs> senior managers went off to see a phonics program and all came back to, oh, this is it, this is it. Most of whom have never taught no. 
early early reading. In fact, I think, yeah, none of them had taught early reading, but they all came back, they've all been convinced by somebody that this is great. Yeah, this is the solution. This is going to sort it, you know. Yeah. And you I, think, I can give you an equivalent. I'm not... thinking to myself, well, it's funny, they never invited me to that, did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We went, we were, we got the go ahead for a massive rebuild of one of our outdoor ed centres and the local councillors went on a visit to a company that do timber frame stuff. And uh, it was an <laughs> impressive look around this company. And on the way out, the councillors were saying, well, let's just give them the contract. <laughs> it, was, it was like a multi-million pound contract. Well, we've seen it. Why can't we just? So yeah. So let's just say you know the the roots of corruption. You know, yeah. don't just sit with this current or the former government, do they? they no, no, no. I mean, I remember. Oh, this is. I remember when I became a head teacher in um, my second headship. Um, we it was it, there was no money. It was you know windows were falling out and everything and and. It wasn't, uh, we were still waiting for the 1997 education, education, education mantra to, to, to even begin. And a builder came around who I'd never met before. And, 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 and the secretary made an appointment for him and he sat down and he had this big sort of leather coat with big pockets. And uh, at, uh, at, and at, at the end of the chat, and I, I can't understand why he's here. We haven't got any money. We're not doing any building work. He took out a massive bottle of whiskey and said, uh, here you are. I said, who's that for? He said, that's for you. And I remember thinking, I remember saying, I don't like whiskey. I <laughs> hate whiskey. So I said, uh, oh, well, I don't like whiskey, but we'll put it in the uh, Christmas raffle. Yeah. yeah. But you think to yourself, you know, yeah, that's just a little segment, isn't it? And, and, I, I, and I'd never experienced that before. But you yeah. imagine how that 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 sort of culture, how that begins at that point, you know, that little you only need a little window, don't you? Yeah. Well, that, I, after I, lighting, well, and suddenly you've, you've lost it. I had a colleague who went on to become a head and had a lot of building work done in the school. Uh, and the same company were also doing work on his house. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, know, you think yeah maybe, mm. maybe yeah 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 maybe it's easy to to fall into those kind yeah. of traps i think i hope now i mean bring this to a close um i hope that that we do have a more um honest um more transparent um more genuine you know sort of compassionate sort of government um as we move forward, I think education needs this now. I don't think we can, I can't take much more of what, what we've had for the last 14. I can't, it's, it's been draining. The, uh, the problem will be the money, won't it? Because the, there isn't the money, unless with well, this big majority, they go and say, right, we're gonna to have to borrow some money and put this well, right. I mean, this will go on for hours now, but I mean, uh, Northern, you know, Henry Morrison at Northern Powers Partnership and his colleagues, you know, the likes of uh, Lord Jim O'Neill and others who I have the greatest respect for, you know, we, we, we do need to see investment in infrastructure as, you know, as a long term investment for the country. Yeah. And that that where that sits on the uh, the profit and loss side of it, where it sits in the accounts, is really important. You know, something that's going to have a benefit for 150 years. You know, mm. that might be a very heavy hit in terms of the amount of outlay over a short period of time, but that is paid back massively. Yeah. And and anybody who lives in the north, as we know, trying to get from Leeds to Manchester on the train, or even just trying to you know tackle. Euston Station on a Friday afternoon, trying to get home to Manchester. You know, we have got a very broken transport system and one that doesn't that serves the South really well, you know, and serves London incredibly well. But mm -hmm. actually, for us in the North, you know, um, I, I can't even can't I can't even bring myself to go by train to Leeds from no. Stockport. Well, do you know that takes me back to one of the very first guests we had on. Must have been in the, in the first few weeks 
who uh, talked about cathedral thinking. Do you remember? He, yes. he was saying his plans were based on cathedral thinking, and cathedral thinking was, we're going to start a project. I may not be alive by the time the project starts to benefit everybody, but we're, we're going to do it anyway. Yes. And, and I think short-termism has been a real problem for the country. Um getting fixed and it, it lies with the political status i think it is. Fix mm. so that i get back in my job again yeah means that every five years we're trying to do everything we can instead of saying right and, and again we go back to what we said before maybe a cross-party agreement that this is something we we all should invest in yes then you look at um the train system and we did have that we did have put cross-party agreement uh, well, just disappeared into. I, I, I haven't seen many of those potholes being filled. I have to say, well, I, I, I saw yeah. a Welsh minister talk about how they should get some of the money from it, yes. even though, even though it, it never went anywhere near. Well. <laughs> I think. Uh, I mean, whoever the Tories choose as their next leader, um, the 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 noise that Jeremy Hunt was making about you know a more conciliatory getting to the centre ground, the Robert Buckland position as well. That's going to be pretty crucial in terms of, in the long term, the challenge for Labour, um, in that if, if the Tories move centrally, then there's going to be a, you know, some, not much space for three parties. But the other thing being that he, he's more likely to want to engage than it would be around a more ideologically right wing leader, yeah. who's probably wanting to to make a a wedge between Labour, the Lib Dems, and the Tories, you know, and and being sort of cuddling up more to the reform end. So I think it's quite important the decision that the the Conservative, the, you know, membership make about this because it does make you wonder, yeah, you know, what has happened to the Conservative membership? You know, have they all now just voted for reform but haven't actually become reform members? If they've become reform members. Then I suspect that the, there's a chance that the old Tory, the old Conservative group of members who are more centralist than than you know those yeah. that have jumped into reform, you know, may end up being able to appoint a more um, a more conciliatory type of leader, you know, than than we yeah. were looking at. In the so past. you've got you've also got the Lib Dems, whose whose agenda is more left wing. Yeah, I know. Than either of the other two parties. And, and also, I, I mean, the Greens have done really well as well. They've done as well yeah. as reform. I mean, they've, they've taken out a couple of you know, big hitters in the Labour um, ranks. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. Can I just uh, uh, just on today, because I know you would have been proud of it, but my brother, Barry, um, you know, <sighs> It was mentioned in his eulogy about his commitment to socialism and uh you know i think all of that comes back to my parents and you know that paid up membership of the labor party my father being you know a, a very strong trade unionist you know all of this is is coming to the fore today for me so uh, uh you know i just want to sort of you know reflect on him and uh think about the sort of stuff he contributed to to education um it's just a shame he, he can't see it but anyway today. Right, uh, that's just over half an hour, Stan. So we've witted on for half an hour. Yeah. I hope people who watch it find it interesting. I suspect yeah. most people will think, oh, we'll go and watch Channel 4. They're a bit more insightful than we are. Yeah, but go anyway. watch Nadine. She's got more to say. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I mean, that's a very low bar stand for us. I think actually we might have got over that bar. I mean, even if, if that's if that sounds like arrogance, then so be it. Um, next week we've got uh, Jill Gray um, joining us as a guest. So we have got a guest next week, and uh, Jill used to be the uh, principal at Blackpool Sixth Form College, an outstanding college um, for many years. So uh, we've not had a Sixth Form principal on um, before. Oh, I don't think so. Um, be interesting to see what she's what her take is on all of this and and how she thinks um, we'll be able to sort of move forward on a skills agenda um, and how you know the, I have to say six form provision in Blackpool which is you know it's got some amazing stuff going on so you know we I, I want to hear more about that how they've managed to do that so so until next week we'll know, know definitely know then who the Secretary of State is who the junior ministers yeah. are 
um, and also we will we're moving towards a publication date of the alternative big listen right so uh, we might even well, I'm not I don't want to give too much away but anyway we are moving towards a publication date so can't wait to share that with everyone okay so until next week take care thank you Stan yes thanks Frank see you soon and see you soon man. bye, bye.